Well, over the weekend, it was a World Teachers' Day. Arisa analyst Dayo Shobuale joins us to discuss how improving teachers' welfare and training can transform global education. Good afternoon, Mr. Shobuale, and a warm welcome to us here on uh, Newsday. It's always a pleasure to be in conversation with you. And of course, over the weekend, the world did commemorate World Teachers' Day. I know some people are marking the occasion today. Education is something very, very close to your heart. What are your mm. thoughts on uh, the occasion of uh, World Teachers' Day this well, year? The teachers deserve all the appreciation, mm -hmm. all the applause uh, they have been given. And it's good that uh, the United Nations has set aside a day for the teachers. Because without teachers, we, I won't be here, I won't be here. The world won't be the peaceful place it is. We should have globalization and you have uh, internet making the world a small village where we see what is happening all over the world. These are products of education and educational development. And the teachers play a key part in that. That is why you can see the war in Lebanon, you can see the war in Israel, and you see the, 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 the uh, natural calamity in the U.S., and things happening around us. Without teachers, the, the world would be a dull place. Mm -hmm. In sociology, they say the human brain is a tabula rasa, a clean slate. So it's what the family puts there, and the teacher puts there, that, makes, that differentiates the human being from the animal in the jungle. So I congratulate the teachers on their day, and I wish them well, but I hope they do not rest on their hours. Let's stop there for now. All right, we'll stop there for now, but uh, you know, just bringing the conversation home, the, the theme for this year's World Teachers' Day is valuing teachers' voices, and the second part of that theme is, theme is towards a new social contract for education. I'll take the first part, which is valuing teachers' voices, uh, especially at the tertiary le le level where we uh, look at uh, lecturers and so forth. You know, we have this ongoing conversation about ASU and their demands and, you know, the state of, of our universities, the state of our in in our entire education uh, system. What do we need to do to give teachers the value they deserve and to place value to their voices? I think to the best of my knowledge, except with ASU, the other teachers' unions are fairly well with, uh, uh, with government. The shortcomings are there. Uh, the teachers don't, they still clamor for more training. The schools, do not have the necessary facilities. In some areas, you have even more schools than needed. And in some areas, the schools cannot function because of insecurity. So when you talk of teachers in Nigeria, you must demarcate between the North and South. In the South, there is relative calm. And traditionally, culturally, people in the South value education more than in the North. And the reason is offer fed. It's because of uh, religious differences. And that has been complicated now by jihadism, which you know, we are all trying to prevent as if, to do a, a return as if we don't see. But that is empowering educational development in the North. Uh, teachers have not been able to go to work in the North. Uh, female students have been abducted and turned into wives by uh, armed people. And you see, I have to doff my heart to the governments in the north for keeping the schools open. But then, see, we cannot discuss education and teachers' welfare without talking of the north. Because the north is part of Nigeria. And the north is suffering from climatic and religious difficulties and challenges. And that is empowering education. Any nation that does not uh, bring this female folk into focus in terms of training and development is going to lag behind. You know the issue of the Chibok girls 10 years ago? They were turned into wives, they were, you know, that sort of thing. The, the Boko Haram mentality or slogan at, that no to Western education is sampering our educational development. It's an hazard to teachers, an hazard to students an hazard to our educational development. I know government is doing a lot about it, but the sooner they put uh, Boko Haram and the IG's movements coming from the Sahel down south, the 
on a des coups de main aux factions, du Beta for Nigeria and the rest of West Africa. But as it is, Nigerian teachers, I commend those in the north, given the circumstances and uh, insecurity uh, perimeters in which they operate. It's a pity. It's a pity. Because they walk at great danger to their own lives. And government should do more to protect them. And anyway, in even in protecting them, according to the United Nations report, government sent uh, soldiers to some schools, which, which was meant to protect. But this insurgency, those soldiers are targets, and they retaliate when they have been defeated. So let government work things out. And then, OK, I hope you are, I can go to the other topic. That's the last one. Asu. Yeah, go for uh, it, yes. To the Asu issue. You see, uh, this is an opportunity for us to try to ask us to be less belligerent because we can create an environment for our students to study in local universities without fleeing abroad. Some of them cannot even uh, afford to go abroad. It's only the children of the rich who do, and they lose out. Because you don't have that high education, the struggle for life. You are, you are being shortchanged, even at the beginning. So let us find a way of negotiating with government. Let us troop to conquer. Okay. I keep on saying it, that university education is not the only form of education nowadays. The world is digitalized. Even public service, they gave about safety an award. It's part of the differences with government. And you know, I've always mentioned him here. Mm -hmm. He has always been ahead. That's a form of education. That's digital development. That's looking forward. See, let us find a different way of bringing it to the grievances. It, it is supposed to have more brains than even government. To get it. <laughs> so, so that it can get what it wants without paralyzing the environment which it is supposed to train students and educate them. Yes. Before we round up, Mr. Shobol, I was having a conversation, I believe it was Rafai, and he was telling me about, you'll correct me about the dates, I may be mistaken, but he was telling me about the era in the 70s when teachers were able to afford to buy their own brand new cars and, uh, you know, a sort of a golden age for, for, for those who worked in the I'm education sector. I'm older than Rafai, I know about that era. Okay, so, yes. well, there's, there's a period of time in Nigerian course, history when the teachers of, were buying brand new cars and so forth. What do you think it'll take for us to go back to that? Or should we forget we, about it? Should we, Nigerian uh, teachers... See, the, the population was lesser then. Mm -hmm. But the values were more oriented towards education, especially in the South. Sorry to say that. Even in the North, the first prime minister, the first premier of the North, uh, the two of them were primary school teachers. They wanted to make the North grow and catch up with the South by all means possible. And they were in government. But unfortunately, they were slain in the coup of 1966. You get me? Um, well, see, before there was a saying that the teachers of the world is in heaven. You get me? But nowadays, you see, uh, the unions have made life better. And in the process, they have not paralyzed their environment like us. You get me? But so, the time we are talking about, our population was less than this. Okay. But people were ready, parents were ready to sell their property to make sure their children went to school. And Tafar Baliwa and Amadou Belo were ready to make the North to catch up. But the coup, and ever since, the leadership of the North has itself to blame for not giving education the priority that led to poverty, Amadjeri, and the rise of Boko Haram, terrorism. So, so for us to go back to, to that era, we, yes. we need to change our views and perspectives towards education yes. as a nation, of course. Grace of God. All right, Mr. Daya Shovale, thank you so much. Pleasure yeah. speaking to you. You're a teacher in your own right. Thank, thank you so you much for always teaching us here with your wisdom and your wealth of experience. We appreciate you. Thank you very much.